I was I was a little bit intimidated because like I think at the time I was wondering what all the all big plans would be. And I was like, how do I approach him? <laughs> but you were you were so nice that like as soon as I walked past it he straight I was just like, Hi, I loved your story, I loved the movie, you know, and I was like, Oh my god, I think I'll be this one this book is right now. <laughs> I was like, thank you so much. Uh, and then I just kind of talked uh, erratically for a little bit. And I don't think I really knew what I was saying, but. <laughs> so you were a tremendous, powerful story. And um, I, I found it odd that Florence didn't have a chance to meet you actually before the filming, right? Yeah. You guys were kind of text us. Yeah, we were. We were like the pen pals kind of. Because I, I didn't get to meet her until afterwards. But uh, she was um, filming over in England, like in the fly over there at neck surgery. So I didn't get a chance to do that, but she did text me every other day. She was truly wonderful, and I mean, she just did a wonderful job, didn't she? And Woo! Yeah. I'm just curious, like, was this like a, a calculated move to to not for for you, Florence, to, to not meet Paige? Gosh, no, I would have loved to have met Paige sooner. I became a fan when I went and started watching. Um, I'd never seen anything. I had grown up watching wrestling and enjoying it, but I had to take a long. <laughs> I had been away from it for a while, so I was so impressed with the Diva stuff. I had never seen anything like her that kind of came out that had that kind of athleticism, beautiful girl, interesting, kind of original. So I was just, uh, you know, I would have loved to have met her prior to. We were soaking up everything that we could as far as information was concerned. I think it was just the way the movie came together. And that, you know, obviously she has a career in that outside of the film. So I just think it was just timing and the way everything landed. I, I think uh, you, you're, you know you're 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 like this other guy that might be flirting. He's gonna have a career, yeah. you know, an outsider wrestler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. You know, Steve, Steven Merchant, who wrote, directed the film, and he brought so much to it that I mean, you don't even need to know anything about wrestling to, to find the. Are you having a hard time hearing? I'm gonna switch it. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. So sorry, sorry for the video. <laughs> um, uh, but you, you don't need to know anything about wrestling to, to relate to the themes of this movie. Stephen Merchant, who wrote and directed it, does did such a phenomenal job. He actually did absolutely incredible. Honestly, we, we have to thank him like a lot for this because I just gave him the story and he made it. And he made the script incredible. I'm sure that like, you enjoyed the script from from Stephen, right? Um, he he was just he's a he's a comedic genius too. I mean, the, the parts with my with my parents. So this is a story that he would usually tell. Is people usually think it's uh is exaggerated for Hollywood, but no, that's exactly how my parents are. All the time. And he said he literally flew to England and just had to follow them around with a notepad <laughs> and just write down everything they said, anything that came out of their mouths, and the script kind of wrote itself for them. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a talent, very talented guy, and having seen the documentary prior to, it's always difficult in narrative to include everything. And I think one thing he did really well was the, the um, intentions of them and the emotions and what was going on. I was saying, Paige, uh, backstage prior to coming out, was the oddity to me in watching was here's a family that's so close, and you could see just how emotional it was for her to make the decision to go. And the whole thing was done for the family. And yet, the irony is, you move away from your family and have a life in a completely different place. I want to ask you, I'll head it back to you. Did you experience that? Did you feel that? Were you closer to your family because of the journey, or was that harder? Yeah, so we were like already obviously super close, as you can see from the movie, of course we are. But yeah, we're like even closer now because I barely get to see my family. I mean, Zach's over here obviously right now because I, I made him stay on this here. He was supposed to go home on Tuesday, and I was like, you're coming to LA with me. Zach, uh, come back here. Woo! This is just as much Zach's story as it is mine. And you know what I think is wonderful about Zach's story is, um, your level of success shouldn't be measured about how famous you are, or how many Instagram followers you have, or how many cameras point in your face. Zach is successful in a way where he wanted a family. He's not a family. He's teaching disabled children how to wrestle. Woo! So Zach is so successful, and that's a story that he wanted to get out there too. That you don't have to, you know, look at someone's Instagram life and feel like you are not as successful when truly you are. I said, don't follow me though if I want. You can all follow me if you want. Woo! He's like, wait, I think I'm getting more followers 
Okay. All right, start it again real quick. <laughs> yes! <laughs> What's it like for you? I love to say it again. And I guess the other question here is like, was anything like off limits when it came to the family? Was it was it just like go for it? Well, with with our family, nothing is really off limits, <laughs> uh, as you can tell. I keep saying, I keep, that's exactly how they are. Like we grew up uh, being in front of a camera. My my parents any. Uh, a documentary that would approach them and like, yeah, go on and throw us on the camera. It'll sell <laughs> more tickets for you. Are. You know, that's how it was. That's how our, our dad and mom was. We were so used to it that when the movie came along and they were like, we were just like, it's fine, put everything out there. We're like an open book, you know. You know what's really strange is uh, about 18 months ago, I was fighting my own demons and I was going for a really hard time. And the first time I watched this movie, I had like a out of body experience <laughs> and uh, I was looking in, looking at my life and uh, you know, it sort of hit home, you know, as my sister said, you don't have to have cameras or thousands of people watching you do what you do. It's if you can make someone feel special and give them their dream. And uh, I do that on a regular basis, training people that uh, are written off in society. You know, it just, that was a, an amazing moment, an amazing experience, and uh, really helpful on uh, mental health, and uh, got me back to where I am today. Woo! Yeah, so, so Clarence, Clarence is like you, uh, but Hutch is, is sort of a, it's a different character because he's not the case on one particular person. So how did that sort of like freak you from like, I gotta play this guy just as he was, to sort of like create your own character? Well, I kind of took a combination of a bunch of guys. Actually, standing over there just to watch the last, you know, ten minutes of the movie, and the reactions have, have been uh, pretty consistent every time we do that, and that's so wonderful you, you, for you guys to hear, you know, laughing and being like, "Aw," and then like, you know, clapping because you know that because of the success of Zach and, and myself and, and different sort, and it's just. It's just really wonderful, and I I already thought you know uh, obviously you're gonna be biased and be like no this movie's gonna be great, but then you don't expect it to be so good. Like we got a ninety two percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Like you said, what the hell? Say that again, Rotten what? Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> Tomatoes. <laughs> Um, hey Paige, I've been a huge fan of yours since you first popped up onto the scene and you've helped me realize my dreams and goals. What would you say for uh, someone like me who's been trying who's uh, trying to get into the uh, WWE? Um, I, I, I said this at the last stream too. <laughs> I don't know but it's like the same advice that Dwayne gave me and stay humble and hungry. Humble because you want to be able to work with people and obviously people are going to be able to work with you. And then stay hungry because you want to set goals and never get complacent, you know. And then I always tell people to be patient because it doesn't come overnight and you really do have to work really hard for it. And if you're a wrestler and went from a girl that didn't do it very well, suck your chin. Our first step is perfect behind you. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Oh really? Yeah, they have to Oh wow. How does it feel to be the actual woman that paved the way in this year's WrestleMania for Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair? Oh yeah. It feels fantastic. Um, I wouldn't say it was just it was just me though. Like there was a, a, a couple of different women that did it. I just came into uh, FCW at the time at NXT. I was just a different flavor of ice cream. You know, you get these women that are so beautiful that they had freaking doves and smoke machine and they were constantly walking around in slow motion. You know, like, it was that kind of beautiful. And then you get me here, it's like the girl who barely brushes her head, doesn't know how to, like, do makeup, still doesn't know how to do it. But, um, I get by. Um, so it was just different for people to see and that kind of, like, I was sparked it. And then I came in and I didn't wrestle like the average girl. I wrestled like a dude because of my brothers. I grew up with my brothers. So that's the thing that kind of set me apart. And then I started doing matches, you know, uh, where they were like, no, you can only do two minutes here, like in FCW. And I'm like, hell no. 
I would go in the matches with the girls and like, we're doing 10 minutes, we're going to do this, 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 like the guys do, and they, they, you know, they got a lot of trouble a lot of times. And then um, a lot of more girls wanted to do that kind of stuff. They wanted to wrestle like the guys and prove that they're just as good, if not better than some of the guys, you know. And then I remember this one time, and it was me and it was Emma, and we were going to Bella Twins. And we, were, we, we got cut, our, our time got cut to like two minutes uh, live on TV. And we were like so frustrated that we were like, okay, we're going to do 30 seconds. So we went out there, we did 30 seconds. We came back, obviously everyone was livid with us. Uh, but we got Give Divas a Chance ton trending for three days straight. And so, like, the Divas Revolution kind of kick started from that. Woo! Yeah, you so much when you watch wrestling, you know, when you were younger. Like, what was it that you learned, like, that surprised you making this movie about wrestling that you didn't already know? Well, I don't think a lot of people realize just how much everyone draws from wrestling. Um, I've said this before, I'm sure, because I, when we went to Rick Luger and Duff Cameron, a lot of the a lot of the promotions and you know the artists that he had he, he really drew from wrestling and i think a lot of people do uh, both for heels and and uh heroes uh it's it's you know when we went to wrestlemania randy wallace who wrote great Hart was there rick rubin was there i just think it's like so popular in spandex it's, yeah. it's entertainment and it's meant to it's meant to be you know you follow these storylines they they create these storylines and they kind of play it out and it's kind of the oldest form of that kind of uh live entertainment, which is, when you're there, it's very visceral. So I, I just appreciated the athleticism. I was kind of blown away that they were all kind of like Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah. They all kind of, it's a common to say about you, I corrected me before. When you stay in character. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. So they, they're like in character backstage, uh, acting as if the characters that you see in the ring, and they don't break character, they kind of stay in their characters. They take it very seriously. So that was interesting, yeah. Here. Thanks a lot. Uh, my name is Joe McQueen K. Uh, uh, I just want to say Zach Zodiac. <laughs> uh, um, I just want to uh, ask uh, if you have anything to tell me about my motivation on getting my story out there. You know, um, my story is very impressive because this is the motivation. I'm just watching your story, and it just a hundred times it gave me that boost. And I just want to ask you, what can you tell me to get the confidence and keep pushing and not giving up on my dream? You should get Dwayne Johnson <laughs> to watch your documentary on YouTube. Uh, no, I mean, it's like I said, like you have to just be so patient with it. I know like, it's so wonderful that you got inspired by the movie. That's exactly the message that obviously like we want. And um, I would just say, just, Keep on trucking, dude. Like, you can do it. Like, I don't really have any advice because it just, like, happened to me randomly, you know, when I was 21 years old. He, he talked to me about this. But, yeah, I would just say completely motivated and so literally never give up. Thanks. What, what impressed you? What impressed you about, about Dwayne Johnson? You know, not, not just from his, from his earlier wrestling career, but, like, I mean, he's, he's an actor, he's a producer, I mean, he's done the thing. <laughs> like, what, was, what was like then? Well, I, I knew you doing from back that movie called Be Cool, it was one of his first movies. Twinkle um, Twinkle, maybe. Uh, <laughs> I've for a long time. And uh, I think he was very charismatic, obviously, in wrestling. He was a guy that I think everyone paid attention to whether they were following the WWE at that time or not. And it's yeah. worth it to see him ascend to the way that he, that he has. Uh, and I think when you hear the advice that he gave, I think it's true for him that he has stayed humble. He's very considerate. Very polite, very warm to people, and he's obviously a guy that's like getting up at four in the morning and eating chicken breast or whatever he's doing. So, <laughs> very cool thing as well. He actually sets an alarm, Stephen would say, that he sets an alarm to, to eat. Like, he has to eat like after a certain couple of, like, certain time of the day or whatever. He has to, like, he has an alarm, and he was like, I was having a conversation with him about movie, like a very serious one, and the alarm goes off, and he was like, wait, goes and just gets like chicken and rice, and it goes continue, it was like shovel and dirty. <laughs> I was like, I wish I had that motivation. You know, just gotta get that protein going. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I mean, like, like, what's some like that first conversation you had with him? Because you know, Rain, you asked him about, hello, hey, yeah, hey, it's Wayne Johnson. I want to make it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it was through text, and it was maybe he called himself DJ, and I'm like, who the hell is DJ? <laughs> and why are you texting my phone? It was very confused. <laughs> and then I obviously asked him, and I was like, who is this? And he's like, well, it's Wayne Johnson. And I was like, what? <laughs> 
I mean, it was just very bizarre. So I mean, like the movie um, where Hutch takes me to the rooms and someone came and got me and took me to the room. So like that's very true the story, like what happened, except from he not only told me that I was going to do this champion and debut it the next day, he also told me about the documentary and that he was going to be making a movie on my life in the space of like five minutes. <laughs> like I was crying my eyes out, eyelashes flying everywhere, so I'm probably going like <laughs> he's like having me tissues constantly like, oh, like you know, it's very emotional. And then he was like, and no one's allowed to know about this. And I was like, got it. And I'm walking outside, like, this is WrestleMania, and I'm walking outside by stage and the teen is out there and she's just like, Are you okay, sis? And I just go, I'm just a really big fan of Dwayne. I don't know. Like, <laughs> like oh, I couldn't say anything. So then I had to continue until I see what I made my baby the next day. I kinda didn't know about it. Billy was the one who told me. So I treat you like that. I haven't met him. Have you met him like a premiere? No, I've still not met him. That's a dream. Yeah. So yeah, I haven't met him. That's crazy. Get him on the phone. Uh, okay, who else has a question? Yes, you were there. Stephen is like a like a therapist. <laughs> you can't help but tell him stuff. He just has that that uh, like just that weird really personality where you feel very comfortable. And he, uh, he never pushed to get the dark stuff out of us. He was just like it was it was if if uh, we 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 told him something, like if you want to say, hey, that's fine. If you don't want it, it's no big deal, you know. But he was always really wonderful. And not at one point was I like, no, I don't want that in there. I gave I gave him everything, and just like I trust you with it now. See, uh, I didn't struggle to tell Stephen anything, to be honest. Uh, any mistake, flaws, bad times, they sort of make you the person you are today. You know, so embrace anything, you know, be true to yourself, be you. You know, if you've messed up in the past, you've messed up. You can't change it, so why dwell on it? You know, so uh, I was quite open and honest about all the dark times that we had. And, uh, you know, I, I felt like he portrayed the character very well. And to be honest, he just... He just literally portrayed whatever I told him. So uh, Stephen is an absolute mastermind. He deserves full credit for this movie. He's done a fantastic job. Woo! This guy's like, really like sorry, first first question. Question. <laughs> and then he's like, hey, shut up. up. Isn't that so ironic? <laughs> the relationship with the other people. Yeah, no, so uh, obviously in the movie that it wasn't portrayed to its full potential uh, when it comes to the other uh, uh, females. When I walked in, they were a lot more, they were a lot meaner to me. <laughs> but but at the same time, I was judging them, which is which is the crazy part when, when you think back to it. I walk in and I was very insecure and I was already thinking, well, these girls are going to be judging me. When in reality, I was also judging them. I was like, okay, well, you're just here because you're a model and because you're pretty. And in, in, in actuality, they are there because, you know, they want to get their kids through school or they want to have a better life. But I was just like, no, this is the way it's supposed you know, you know, so we were kind of very similar. And that's why we became friends because I realized that I was like, I'm judging you and I shouldn't be doing that. And and uh, we apologize to each other in the long run and now we're all really good friends. Although I'm the only one who made it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, that was also very similar too. And, and the thing is about Zach and Chris, I, I don't want anyone to um, misjudge like how he's feeling, but he, he was more so not jealous of my accomplishment. He was just very frustrated because he had a dream and he did have it longer than I had. 
I, know. I mean, Zach is such like a wrestling encyclopedia that he knows rest is just by their boots, you know. And so um, he was very frustrated and he, and he thought that he needed this to be successful, which in actuality he, he didn't. So um, it took a while. It didn't take as long as what we like, it, it's a trade may, maybe like a couple of weeks. I mean, this is over the course of like two and a half years of being in SW, you know. But after a couple of weeks, that kind of snapped out of it a little. And he's just like, oh, I'm sorry. And then when he watched the movie too, it made him think back to like those feelings as well, right? So he called me after watching the movie and he was just like, I'm so sorry. So this is crying his eyes up. I'm so sorry I was mean to you. <laughs> just throw him on the bus right now. <laughs> you know what? I think uh, honesty is the best policy. And there was a part of me that was very jealous. You know, my sister. A person who I had uh, travelled up and down the road with and got rid of ring at every available moment. Um, you know, we would be in that ring, practice of moves. Um, she was like my dummy. I was throwing her around. I'm like, this move is so cool. I love my sister. This is going to be a pop, man. I'm definitely going to be over on this show. Um, but yeah, there was, there was jealousy. I'm not even going to lie. There was jealousy. Uh, but most of all, I wanted to be there with her. I wanted to be a big brother. You know, we all know that, you know, my sister's had some dark times. And if you guys have seen Jay and Solid Bob, I wanted to do that. I wanted to travel around on their plane and beat the crap out of everyone that was talking crap about my sister. Bro, woo! So, and it was a hard time for it. And I wanted to be there because that's something that's always happened. We've always been together. Even though there's 5,000 miles between us, I feel that we're closer now than ever. One more thing. Hutch, can I get that job now, please? <laughs> hey! I can't say, you know, hearing you say all of this, I think you really are a part of her. And every, your whole family is a part of her. I think all those times in the ring and the closest that you share, the love that you have for her. I don't know that Paige would have gone on to be who she was without that love, without that support. And all thing is why we're all here. So thank you so much to you and to you, Paige, for, for uh, sharing your story and for including me in the so ladies and gentlemen, here's how you can help. I mean, yes, to have the 92 percent on rocks and rock what? Rotten tomatoes. Rotten That's all cool. But you know what's better? To spread the word about the film that you love is social media. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. So Woo! make sure you go on Facebook, go on Instagram, go on Twitter. You in the back, you're still using MySpace. <laughs> totally fine. <laughs> But spread the word about playing with my family. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you all so much. Woo! Thank you. I think my sister is here tonight.